Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. I'm Nurul Hazima binti Abdul Hamid as the moderator for this episode. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today who is going to talk to us about live food in aquaculture. Before I begin, let me introduce our speaker first. Her name is Alia Natasha Benti Ahmad Marzuki, a student from Bachelor of Science Aquaculture with Honours and currently in second year. She was a former diploma student in fisheries and from University Putra Malaysia Bintulu Campus. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our speaker Alia. Okay, uh, thank you to our today's beautiful moderator, Saudari Hazima. Okay, for today's uh, virtual speaker corner, I would like to talk about live food in aquaculture. Uh, some of you may already know about this, some of you may not. So let's go. Okay, first thing first, what is aquaculture? If you divide the aquaculture into two words, that which is aqua and culture, so if you search aqua, aqua is uh, a greenish blue of color that uh, define the shade of water. It, but it also used to mean that uh, water. In fact, in Latin root, the aqua means that water, sea or rain. Meanwhile, the culture means that you raise or um, you raise or care something that Something. So basically, aquaculture means that a controlled process of cultivating of aquatic organism. Why control? The aquaculturists, uh, they breed the aquatic organism in a uh, environment that they already set up for the aquatic organism. Example of aquatic organism are shellfish, uh, lobster, shrimp, and a varieties of uh, varieties of fish such as carps, uh, catfish, and more. Aquaculture, also known as aqua farming, because it it is basically the same as farming, but you farm in the water. So, uh, for example, of aquaculture is aquaculture of catfish. Uh, these are example of pictures. So, you raise a juvenile catfish into adult mature catfish to breed for another cycle of breeding or you can uh, breed the juvenile catfish into a certain size of uh, of the catfish to make it into a processed food like uh, this example is a processed catfish okay next thing is what is live food live food is a living food that culture to feed the aquatic organism in the aquaculture it also known. Uh, it also is a natural food source in the aquaculture system. For example, amphora is a microalgae that uh, the shape looks like a stomata. Uh, mealworm in Malay is uh, ulat roti, uh, spirulina, duckweed, uh, rotifers, moina, crickets, crickets. Um, uh, in Malay word is a uh, chinkerit. Okay, next. Okay, why is live food is important? First, the live food is important because the live food is suitable, is suitable for the larvae. So if you know, if you notice, the larvae of the aquatic organism are very, very small. So the mouth size restricts the size of food particles which can be ingested by the larvae. So the second is it have high energy content to supply to the larvae for growth. Um, live food also supply required nutrients um, because uh, larvae are still young to generate their own required nutrients or convert them in, from any precursor uh, uh, nutrient obtained from the diet. Number four, 
uh, the live food can be digested by the larvae. It is important because the larvae have incomplete digestive system that lacks uh, enzyme to break down the food. Okay, there are two types of live food, which are plants and animals. Plants are plants have two categories, which is microalgae and aquatic plants. Uh, for example, of microalgae is chlorella, nanochloropsis, ketoceres. Ketoceres is very very popular in the aquaculture industry because it in larvae shrimp. Uh, industry because it has very, very high nutrient. So aquatic plants are duckweed, water lotus, and Igeria densa. Uh, examples of animals alive food are Artemia, uh, which also known as brine shrimp. Rotifers uh, in Latin means wheelbarrow because it's, they are still alive under the microscope. You can see they whirl like wheel. They, their movement it's like a wheel. So, copy pots, mealworm, microworm, bloodworm is a hieronymic larvae that you can find near the waste wastewater and frogs. Okay, uh, I would like to give example for how to culture the live food. So, the first one is microalgae. Like the name, micro means microscopic algae, meaning that it's very, very small. So it is suitable for molas, um, other life foods such as rotifers, artemia, meaning that you can uh, culture microalgae to, to feed the artemia and rotifer. Crustacean and fish larvae. Microalgae is very, very popular in aquaculture industry because it can be digestible easy for mass culture, meaning that you can culture in a very, very big amount. Uh, it contains high nutrient and withstand fluctuating temperature because in many countries, the, uh, the temperature can be uh, uh, increased or decreased uh, during the day and night. Okay, these are important parameters that uh, for to culture microalgae. So the first one is nutrient. So nitrogens are very, very important in microalgae because uh, it, it, it is for the protein development and cellular process for the microalgae. Uh, silica is for, it, silica is contain uh, dye atoms that are part of the cell structure of the microalgae. And micronutrient um, such as trace metals and B complex are important for cell division and energy production. Light, the second one, light must be 18 hours. Uh, the third one is pH. You must, uh, the water for the micro, for culture microalgae must be 8.2 to 8.7. Uh, the fourth one is aeration. Aeration is important to prevent sedimentation and to equally expose the cells for the light and the nutrient. Temperature must be 16 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius because uh, below 16, it can slow down the growth of the microalgae or if it, it, if, if it uh, past 35 degrees, it can be little for the cold water species. Okay, how to culture microalgae? First, you have to have started culture or uh, in also known as inoculum. Uh, this you can collect by in the wild or a monospecific. Okay, the amount of inoculum to be used in, is determined by the total volume of culture. Uh, large scale uh, need more starter required to affect uh, faster harvest of cultures. The second one you have to add Second step is you have to add fertilizer for the microalgae. Third one is you have to add water. Remember guys, uh, the water need to have a pH in 8.2 to 8.7. So mostly aquaculturists will add seawater because seawater have a pH of 8.8 8 to 8.5. So 
the the fourth one is to upscale if you don't want to harvest the microalgae you need to upscale because if you leave them like that because uh, they can crash they can, the microalgae also can crash so how to upscale you have to add the volume of the water you have to take six percent or more percent of percentage of inoculum into a bigger tank bigger volume uh, when the uh, microalgae in a, a, a phase of number two exponential phase in the right side of the slide because uh, the phase is very very good for another growth of culture okay the second one is mealworm mealworm uh, like i said is ulat roti in malay so it is a larval form of a duckling beetle tinebrio monitor they have four stages which is eggs larva pupa and adult it is uh, why people uh, culture uh, mealworm it because it have high protein and easy to keep um, it also suitable for ornamental fish um, so culture to to culture the mealworm you have to have a plastic container uh, to keep the mealworm and the second one is substrate you have to uh, have a substrate like a uh, chicken corn a uh, chicken feed like corn or egg shells you have to have a uh, water or food source um, such as apple apricot to feed the mealworm so how to culture the mealworm first you have to buy mealworm at the pet shop so when you buy the mealworm you have to feed them because they may be not well fed in the pet shop so I, you have to feed them with vegetables or eggshells. So next, they will start to pupate. Uh, they will become a pupa. But if you want to um, induce them, you can. You have to take them and put it into a container and, and uh, do not feed them water or uh, food. They will start to pupate. So number four, if they... Uh, turn into a dark, darker color. They, you will have to feed them with more vegetables um, and eggshells. Uh, then, if you see the they start to uh, have uh, eggs, you have to separate the parents from the babies because the parents will eat the babies. Okay, before I end the talk, um, there are five inter interesting facts about aquaculture. The first one is we eat ton of fish, not tuna fish. Okay, so from 19, 1980 to two thousand fifteen, the demand for uh, demand per capita for food fish supply are eleven point seven to two twenty uh, to twenty point three kg. So it is very very the demand for the food fish is very very double. Okay, the second one, even our fish is made in China. So China is a largest producer and a top uh, exporter in aquaculture industry. As of 2016, China contributes 60 more, uh, 60, more than 60% of the global production. In 2004, um, China exported 6.6 .6 billion USD worth of fish to other countries. And number third is aquaculture is a pollution industry. So yes, aquaculture is a pollution industry. So some aquaculturists are um, already taking action to reduce the, um, the impact that can uh, pollute the environment, such as they set up a sedimentation tank to or uh, they use a multicultural tank, a uh, multicultural to to reduce the pollution. So number four is Egyptian were raising fish more than four thousand years ago. So number five, over half of the seafood eaten worldwide come from aquaculture. So like uh like I just said, we we really really rely on the ocean. Uh, for our seafood 
So I would like, as an aquaculture student, I would like to convey a message uh, to save the ocean. I know everyone here must already know about the campaign or the uh, awareness that already already shown, but it is very, very important to save the ocean. So there are three things are uh, very, very simple for us as a students can do, which is uh, first, use a metal straw. Okay. Second is use recycle bag. There are many, many recycle bag that uh, I have been pro provided by the supermarket. You can buy it instead of paying 20 cents for each plastic bag that you bought. Okay, number third is uh, in this, during this COVID, you can, uh, you can untie your face mask. Okay, you can untie both uh, the face mask and throw it into the dustbin. Remember guys, to throw it into the dustbin, not the streets, not into the drain. So I would like to quote, we can change the world and make it a better place. It is in your hands to make a difference by Nelson Mandela. Thank you. Wow, such a great information, Alia. Thanks to our speaker, Alia Natasha, for letting us to understand more about life food in aquaculture. And thank you, everyone, for lending, me, lending us your ears and eyes to watch this episode. With that, we end our virtual speaker's corner with the tagline, Pertanian Tunjang Kehidupan. Thank you, everyone.